Now, every now and again, a product comes along that uh, well, it really sparks a bit of interest. And first of all, this one, well, it caught my eye. That's, uh, well, that's fair to say. And then, of course, well, uh, I started to hit some golf balls and, uh, well, it really started to get, well, quite interesting. So a few balls in and I'm really interested in these irons, but the first thing that uh, drew my attention, well, that was how they looked. You see that there is the new Cobra Forge Tech iron and I've got to say on uh, from a shelf appeal perspective, I really like the look of that and I've always said first of all you buy with your eyes. This is another hollow bodied iron on the marketplace, another one with a forged face that isn't truly forged. There's also another model within this range that sort of makes a real interesting mix up. So you tell me first of all what you think of these irons in terms of how they look. I mean, I am always a sucker for the bit of shiny chrome. They mix it up quite well with that satin finish as well. I've got to say, it's got very much a P790 look about it. It's very close to being uh, almost too similar. Top line is very similar to that of the P790 as well. So shape, profile, almost shelf appeal, very, very similar indeed. But there's one thing that separates them quite significantly. So the first thing that separates these is about 100 quid if you buy six irons. So what's that, 15, 18 quid per iron difference in terms of cost? So the question is, why should you buy P790s and shell out 100 pound more for their iron as opposed to the Forge Tech? Well, the simple answer to that question is you shouldn't. There's absolutely no reason why you would buy P790 over these and you might as well save yourself 100 pound. The thing is, these look very, very similar. They sound very, very similar. They perform very similar, apart from one attribute in the Cobra product, which I think is potentially a little bit better. And that one attribute is data that I've gathered here this morning on TrackMan. I'll throw up some averages for you now. And the one key figure that is of real interest to me is that spin number. If you watch videos, even in recent weeks, but certainly over a period of time, it's the one figure that with strong lofted irons, with hollow bodied forged irons, we did a review on a few weeks back. It's the one figure that always tends to drop off just that little bit too low. And the one thing the Forge Tech iron does from Cobra is it maintains a real, real good spin number, despite that strong loft. And that's something I've not really seen from many other irons in this category. So for me, that's a massive bonus. But there are also some concerns in terms of the uh, data that's been collected here this morning. If you look across the board, you'll see one thing that is prevalent and that's a little bit of inconsistency in terms of ball speed and carry distance. And if you look at the swing speed, club head speed, that remains fairly similar. So I'd be a little bit concerned that in this model, I may struggle a little bit in terms of consistency, but there is a potential answer to that problem as well. And the answer is in this thing here. This is the Forge Tech X. And that X just basically means it's a little bit bulkier, it's a little bit stronger lofted. Hopefully it's a little bit more forgiving. And the idea of blending these two sets is the perfect solution. If you're not quite good enough to handle that Forge Tech iron, then maybe slipping this one in the bag is a solution that Cobra have provided, which I like the idea of. But I've got to say where Cobra have done incredibly well with this club is making it very much streamlined, at least from the top line in that there's no real extra mass from the top line, no more bulk at the back of the club head that you see it address. So if you were to blend these two sets together, then arguably you'd pick up one club on the next and you would not notice you've got effectively a different iron in hand. So while there's a bit more bulk in and around visibly, so it's maybe a little bit wider, like I said, a bit stronger lofted, there's no real visible difference at address, which is the only important bit for me. But then in performance terms, there's a huge difference. You see, the biggest shock for me is the performance of this Forge Tech X. And what I mean by performance is the data that we got with a stronger lofted club is not that different than the original Forge Tech. So for me to blend this set, absolutely perfect. Look at that spin number, how it's still maintained. Yes, it drops off a little bit compared to that Forge Tech, but the uh, peak height and descent angle, even though this ball is launching a little bit lower, is still very much in line with that of the 7-iron from the Forge Tech as well. But the distance, additional carry is really significant. So if you're looking for a bit of help, which arguably I would have done, the suggestion is in the numbers that maybe me finding the center of that Forge Tech head 
was a little bit more difficult than it should have been and therefore going into something like this is that happy medium that we're always looking for. It's a great ball flight as well that uh, really keeps on impressing me with this iron. I did a review just a couple of days ago of a hybrid from Cobra. And I said at the end of that video that surprisingly, although I've kind of always been impressed with what Cobra done, nothing has really sparked my attention to consider putting one of their products in the bag, which I was quite surprised at, but ultimately I know for a fact they've never made their way into my bag. But what I can say is this Cobra Forge deck, particularly the X model, has significantly changed that opinion. I'm so, so impressed with that X model. Like I said, what I like about it, I talked about as this video was going on, about blending these sets together. I'm now at the end of the video and I'm thinking, well, why would you even bother? The Forge Tech X looks so good anyway, and the fact that it isn't any more bulky or uh, at a dress, that top line's very no different at all. I'm not really sure what the appeal of putting just the standard Forge Tech is. In fact, it just makes it a little bit more difficult. So for me, the standout product in this range is without doubt that Forge Tech X. And like I said, I have no hesitation in putting those irons in the bag. They look really good. They've got a great sound and feel about them, which is often an issue with these hollow bodied irons. And the performance is exceptionally good. What's not to like? Well done, Cobra. Right, anyway, that's me done. Uh, don't forget, let me, a few of you um, made a note in my top five hollow bodied irons video that I did recently, why weren't these included? And quite simply, I hadn't tested them and they would have gone right into that pile and perhaps very near the top as well. So if you have tried them, give me some feedback down below on what your thoughts are and help share those opinions with your fellow golfer. Right, thanks for watching. I'm done. See you later.